Thank you, everyone. Uh, my name is Ari Fitzgerald, and I'm a partner and uh, practice leader in Hogan Lovell's communications, internet, and media practice. A practice, by the way, that was uh, honored recently by Law 360 as the 2022 Telecom Practice of the Year. So, hooray. Thanks. <laughs> On behalf of the firm and my practice colleagues, I'd like to welcome you to the 2023 Winnick Tech and Telecom Forum. This year's Winnick Forum will focus on open radio access network or ORAN technology and include a panel of mobile operator industry experts and a panel of vendor experts. We will hear remarks this afternoon from Senator Mark Warner and in a few minutes remarks from Deputy National Security Advisor Ann Neuberger. I'd like to thank Ann and Senator Warner for taking time out of their very busy schedules to be with us. And a big thanks to all of our panelists for taking part in this important conference. Before we launch into a discussion of ORAN, it is our tradition to begin each Winnick Forum with a tribute to our former partner and friend, Joel Winnick. We do this for two reasons. First, many of us personally benefited from Joel's mentorship. Second, it's important for those currently at the firm who did not have the privilege of working with Joel to understand how they too benefited from his legacy. I know that Joel's wife, Barbara, and daughters, Rachel and Ariel, are joining us virtually today. Um, we're very grateful to have them with us virtually. Um, I also understand that uh, Joel's son-in-law, Will Yavinsky, will be joining us live. Will is one of my partners. I see him there and I wanna acknowledge Will. So I can think of no better person to offer this year's tribute to Joel Winnick than Eric Loeb. Eric is currently Executive Vice President for Global Government Affairs and Public Policy at Salesforce. He also serves as Chair of the United States Council for International Business. Prior to joining Salesforce, Eric was Senior Vice President of International External Affairs at AT&T and served in similar roles at Concert and British Telecom. Most importantly for our purposes, Eric started his legal career here at Hogan, where he worked very closely with Joel Winnick. Please join me in inviting back Eric Loeb. Well, it's special to be here with all of you today uh, to celebrate and remember Joel for the, uh, the incredible person uh, that he was, the happiness that he always brought into the room and all the achievements, as Ari said, that, that he has uh, brought for the profession. And I just thank you for this opportunity to, uh, to be here and to share some reflections on, on a dear friend. Um, for those of you that I don't already know, and as Ari said, long before Salesforce, I started my career right here uh, in this building and in an office right next to Joel's on the 10th floor. Uh, and I'm seeing, sitting here with David Saradsky. We we're all part of this wonderful crew together. Um, Joel's my mentor, my friend, and, um, and he set my career on a serendipitous journey that I couldn't have ever predicted before knowing him. And I, I think of him often. And uh, as I already said, and as we all feel, I still draw on his advice always when I'm working through challenges. Uh, apart from Joel's many achievements, he was very importantly, immensely kind and curious and balanced. And he liked to collaborate with people as a team, inclusively welcoming ideas from others at all levels of experience at all times. He was truly open to ideas in a, in a, in a magical way. And um, I think that those characteristics, along with his very frenetic energy that he was famous for, uh, led to the achievements. And um, his humor, as we've heard in prior years, and his, uh, his friendliness are legendary. And no matter what level of intensity was at play with our work, Joel was warm. He was ready with a joke. And Joel was not a yeller, except for one ironic fact for a telecommunications practice that he really didn't like to use the phone to ask people to come on over to his office. <laughs> he would just kind of yell around the corner or knock on the wall. And uh, that's when he wanted to talk. Um, 
But, you know, when we were working really hard on a big project, that good nature and his mischievous humor, they didn't go away. Um, he wasn't buried by stress when things were intense. And, you know, it's not always the first thing you think about when you talk about practicing international regulatory law, but we had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun working together, and Joel set that tone. He, he also set a tone of curiosity, perfectionism, and not settling for conventional wisdom. And when we were working together um, at a really exciting time, a time of expanding possibilities that were so well suited for Joel's outlook, just going back to when it was, the 1996 Telecom Act had recently passed. In 1997, the WTO Global Agreement on Trade and Services was being transposed into new national commitments all over the world for opening telecom markets to competition. And of course, the possibilities of the internet and IP-based services were just starting to gather steam. It was just an incredible point in time. And all of this required new ways of thinking, believing that the past informed but did not limit the future. And with this perspective, Joel would work through an obstacle relentlessly until he found an opening. Sometimes he would strategically build that opening through a patient aggregation of marginal gains. And sometimes he would just blast through it and, and flip the conventional argument on its head. My most clear memory of this was in 1996. We were working on a, a regulatory and competition approval of a very high profile foreign telecom carrier acquisition of a US carrier. And at that time, for those of you who remember back to then, the conventional wisdom was that a foreign carrier could not be allowed to own more than 25% of a US carrier if it held spectrum licenses. That was just the conventional wisdom. But Joel looked at it differently. And uh, the way he looked at it, the limit was 25%, unless it was in the public interest for it to be more than 25%. And Joel didn't see a barrier. He just saw an opportunity to relentlessly prove that in this case, that 100% ultimate foreign ownership was in the public interest. And he succeeded. And from that point forward, there really was a new conventional wisdom about what was possible in this space. So that relentless curiosity to find a solution and turn over every stone until you do and not stop until you've given your best, it's a lesson from Joel in professional pride and, and it's just always stayed with me. Um, you know, a third attribute that from Joel that I just deeply respect uh, was his love for his family. And Barbara, Rachel, Ariel, he would talk about you always. And it was clear for all of us that for all he enjoyed being at the office, practicing law with friends, they were the joy of his life. And he was a man in balance because of them. Now, a, a final thought that I wanna share uh, that I also just think about from Joel so often as, as we're all here and we're working to find our, our post COVID balance on how much to return to the office versus being remote. And this, this applies to people you know, newer in their careers or for those with you know, much more experience in their careers. Being together, it, it creates this space for serendipity, for informal mentorship and reverse mentorship, and it can change the trajectory of someone's life. And it can happen in a fluid way when you're physically in the same space and have those unplanned encounters or moments of course, it can happen when you're remote, but you need to much more consciously create the constructs for those unplanned encounters. So when I when I started at Hogan, after having been here as a summer associate and also working here through my, my third year at Georgetown, I, I thought I had a pretty good sense that I was going to practice in a, in a different part of the practice group, different area of communications law. But soon after I started full time and working in a different practice group, one of those famous knocks on the wall came and a shout to come on over. And it was Joel just saying, I need your help with something big. And in that moment, which I remember in perfect clarity, 27 years later, um, it just changed the track of everything. Um, it was the moment that kind of bent the arc for me and put me on a, a different path, a path that Joel nurtured and mentored and encouraged. And uh, so to this day, I, I think about that. And it's a big reason why I show up at the office. Um, 
because I don't know what that moment will be or who I might be able to help or who I might learn from. But I do believe that by showing up, it just increases that chance that I can and pay it back in the way that Joel did for me. And so uh, in that spirit of being together and learning, as Joel was just the greatest example of a, a lifelong learner, I look forward to learn from our speakers in this special opportunity to be here together today. Um, um, Eric really did um, bring Joel uh, for those of you who hadn't met him, uh, Eric's remarks just brought everything back. And thank you so much, Eric, for sharing that with us.